Hey guys, I'm Tony Tian, and if you're new to this channel, I'm taking a medical student at University of Targo. So today, what we're trying to determine is the difference between type 1 respiratory failure and type 2 respiratory failure. So I'm going to give a brief description about what these two is, and then we're going to go into the details. So first, we have the type 1 respiratory uh, failure. So this is when you're uh, PaO2, and make sure the A is a small a, the smaller case A. And this uh, what this means is the arterial um, arterial oxygen level is low and the arterial uh, carbon dioxide level is normal so when we're measuring um, when it comes down to the end for respiratory failure we really try to focus on um, the actual um, the actual arterial pressure instead of just what's in your alveolar because that is what's actually important to our body what gets into our blood actually enters the circulation becomes vital to our survival if it just stays in the air it doesn't really much makes that much of a difference right so you have low arterial oxygen pressure uh, and you have normal carbon dioxide pressure and this is what this means is that it's caused by a gas exchange problems and we're going to uh, dive into why a little bit later on and then we have the type 2 as well so the type 2 means except the the arterial blood pressure no the arterial pressure for the oxygen is low in your blood your arterial pressure for your carbon dioxide um, is also high so it's abnormal you're having accumulation of carbon dioxide in your body and this is caused by ventilation problems usually or it can be caused by both but the um, the hypoventilation side is sort of dominating by the way i said hypoventilation means you're not ventilating enough all right, so let's talk about the first one. So basically, uh, type one. The the reason we say it's gas exchange problems is because we have a normal carbon dioxide level, and this is because uh, during a normal gas exchange across the the the, the gas blood, the blood air barrier, uh, in your lungs, the type two pneumocytes. Um, uh, when when you're doing gas exchange, the carbon dioxide is about I think twenty or forty per forty times. I can't remember the exact number, but all you want to know is that the carbon dioxide is way more diffusible than the oxygen. So therefore, if you have like a thickened barrier, or if you have some sort of VQ mismatch, um, then the ventilation sorry the VQ mismatch refers to the ventilation and perfusion mismatch basically when you're getting too much blood flow not enough air or when you have too much air but not enough blood flow to to uh, bring ox all the oxygen we say you have a VQ mismatch and uh, it could be caused by shunting shunting means like you have part of your lungs that has really thickened exchange barrier and it can't really do any exchange and the blood sort of just going through that region of tissue without getting actual any oxygen so it's kind of like going straight from your artery to your um to your veins without going through the actual muscle so it's a shunt it's a it's a quick access a quick portal so this can cause uh, in conditions like pneumonia or pulmonary edema etc so basically when um when the ventilation is normal because the the carbon dioxide is way more diffusible so it goes out but the oxygen is not and needs a certain amount of time it needs certain uh, amount of th um, thickness of your um of your blood uh, of your blood air exchange barrier um therefore um therefore it is um the oxygen level is going to remain low because the oxygen from the from the atmosphere cannot get into the body but the carbon dioxide that's accumulated high in the body can get out right so when it comes to type 1 exchange just think about it, it's really more about gas exchange than ventilation because uh, a normal co2 le level usually means you can ventilate properly because you can still bring all the carbon dioxide out and now it comes to the type 2 and so in type 2, they, there can be a predisposed um, gas exchange problems because type 1 uh, respiratory failure can occur simultaneously with um, the type 2 um, respiratory failure and it's relatively common somehow. So in type 2, basically you have a low oxygen level and you have a high carbon dioxide level. So the intuitive thinking here is sort of... Um, if the oxygen is low and because of the body consumption and the carbon dioxide is high because of the metabolism, the same process that creates the low oxygen because we convert all the oxygen into the carbon dioxide and both of them cannot get out, which means um, 
either there's a combination of the gas exchange problems and the ventilation, or there's simply just uh, ventilation problems. Because if you think about when the ventilation is shut down, no new fresh air is coming in, and no air is going out, basically means no carbon dioxide can be expelled and no oxygen can be brought in. Whereas in type 1, because the carbon dioxide is normal, so we know there's still air going out and in. So that's why we know we confirm that it's a gas exchange problem. Right. So this can be things like uh, chronic bronchitis, emphysema, when, when it causes, uh, causes a collapse in the airway. And so this is more about uh, ventilation and I think there's a slight confusion about emphysema for most of the people because most people think it's just an alveolar sac um, they're losing all the middle segments and it's sort of collapsing and that, that part is correct but a lot of people are think about the terminal uh, the terminal of um, alveoli and how they're collapsing and causes a restrictive lung disease but it is in fact not like that so emphysema usually um, happens in um, um, in the alveola, this sort of a sits um, on the bronchus that's leading into um, leading into the the terminal alveola. So it's sort of in the middle of the airway that's sort of collapsing. So it's not the end is normally fine. It does occur, but it's really uh, really really very rare. And most of the emphysema happens during that middle section, which means it's the middle of the airway tube. And when that collapses, and as you can imagine, as it loses its tension. Uh, all of its elastic tissue it starts to collapse in the middle and that's why it's an obstructive uh, lung disease and that's why it causes a ventilation problem so if you hyperventilate you increase the level of carbon dioxide and you get uh, ph abnormalities as well you, it can lead into the respiratory um, acidosis and it can compensate by the meta uh, me metabolic acidosis but that is a topic for another week and right so that's everything hope you guys um understood how to oh actually one more point one more point um so the exact way that we actually determine if it's a gas exchange problem is that um we we measure the the um, the ad, the sorry the alveolar oxygen level and we compare it to the arterial oxygen level so we can see how much is getting in and how much is getting out and you might be confused say uh, how do we uh, actually calculate that so there's a equation uh, that uh, describes this relationship is uh, uh, the PaO2 equals 150 minus PaCO2 over 0.8 so basically uh, it's saying that the the alveolar the alveolar oxygen uh, oxygen pressure because that's something we cannot measure we can't really stick something into your alveolar and measure but we can calculate it so it's a very complicated math conversion process that we don't need to go into detail with but then it comes to um the the f uh, the 150 part is in fact fio2 uh times uh the bracket of pb minus 47 so um what this means is the fraction of the inspired oxygen that's in the air so in normal atmosphere is about 21 percent but it does change when you go up in altitude and so that's times the atmos atmospheric pressure in total minus 47 and the 47 is actually the content of the water so basically it's just a fraction of oxygen times the pressure of the atmosphere minus the water and so this is assumed to be 150 in most of the circumstances. If you're living on the plateau, sitting at the altitude of maybe like below 3000, and you're, you're most likely to use 150 as a rough estimation, just to make your life easier. So you use 150 minus the PaCO2. So over here is a small, a small case, the lowercase a, uh, meaning the, the arterial carbon dioxide, pre uh, carbon dioxide pressure, which is something you can measure along with the arterial oxygen pressure because you just need to take some blood out. And that's over 0 0.8. So this entire thing, 150 minus the art arterial carbon dioxide arterial carbon dioxide pressure over 0.8 equals the alveolar oxygen pressure. So basically, from this equation, you can imagine if the arterial carbon dioxide is going down, is sitting at the normal level, then the alveolar oxygen pressure is going to go up. Yeah, and um, if the, the arterial, uh, sorry, if, yeah, if the arterial carbon dioxide level goes up if it gets abnormal 
which is the ventilation problem, then the PaO2, the alveolar O2 is going to go down as well. So if the arterial, no, sorry, if the alveolar oxygen goes down, that means there's no actual oxygen going in, which sort of fix, uh, which sort of fits the description of the type 2 uh, pneumonia as well. But here we're really trying to determine the difference between these two. So then we basically do a comparison between the alveolar and the arterial oxygen pressure. So we, we subtract them. We use the alveolar one to subtract the arterial one because obviously the alveolar one is going to be a bit better, a uh, bit higher because not all of the oxygen is always going to go into our lungs. It's not going to it's not gonna have time for like complete exact equilibrium. And also because uh, the VQ mismatch uh, that we mentioned about sort of has have a natural occurrence within our body due to the gravity so sort of pulling more blood towards the bottom and more air towards the bottom as well. So leaving uh, leaving the top a little bit mismatched um, and it's actually because it pulls on the um, on the blood a little bit more and on the gas a little bit less so basically there's a higher percentage of air in the upper lobe and a higher percentage of blood in the lower lobe and it creates sort of a natural mismatch and this is why um, the the arterial blood that we get into our left uh, left atrium is not completely oxygenated. Um, anyways, so you subtract these two, and basically we take the difference. Uh, we take the threshold of ten uh, between the difference of these two. So if it's more than ten, if there's a difference more than ten, that means there's a gas exchange problem. And if it's less than ten, then it's normal and it's likely to be a ventilation problem. But as I mentioned. It can be both. It can be a type 1 and type 2. Alright, so this is the actual end of the video. And if you have any more questions, just leave it in the comment section below. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time. Bye.